Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Adam Wild for Brixia Studios, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Lego Creator Expert 10255 Assembly Square. So, jumping into the specifics of this set, it contains 4,002 pieces, 9 minifigures, and the UK retails for $179.99, in the US $279.99, and in Europe $233.94. <laughs> Honestly, I don't get those European prices, they just don't make any sense, really. Um, it's really, really confusing. This set has a price per piece of 4.5 pieces, which is absolutely incredible. It, it's amazing. 4,000 pieces for £180 is amazing. This set is ginormous, and I can't wait to open unboxing it, which is exactly what we're going to do right now. So that's a ton of parts, and just now that was a ton of noise. Me dumping this box out was insane. An insane amount of noise. RIP headphone users, your ears are probably like ringing, but there are just a ton of bags here. There's multiples of each one, so move the instructions out of the way. L loads of bag ones, plenty of bag twos, uh, loads of bag threes, uh, bag four. Like ton, like bag five is insane, um, and then the most seems to be bag six. Like is like almost six bags there. It's insane. There's a big thick instruction manual. That is one thick boy. Um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. And then you got sixty by sixteen. Um, no, not sixty. Uh, thirty-two by thirty-two, sixteen by thirty-two, and the eight by sixteen. Um, now's the time where you'd probably I think I do a speed build. But since this set is so ginormous, I'm probably not going to do a speed build of it. Um, actually, by the time you're watching this, I've um, for, I've done live streams of this. I'm going to be doing six live streams, uh, building each bag. Um, so I'm doing this long before those live streams um, start, whatever, about a week before. Um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. You guys have probably seen all those. So, yeah, I have no idea what's to come. You guys have already seen them. So I bet they are pretty fun, but I'll be building this massive set um, yeah, I'm not doing a speed build. My camera could not hold a footage. Um, I'd have to cut like loads, loads of times. It wouldn't be the best, but yeah, let's just cut to when this beautiful set is built, so I can actually review it. So the footage you just watched me unboxing Assembly Square was shot about three weeks ago from the time this is being uploaded, and um, since then, what should have happened, as I stated in that footage, was I was supposed to do some live streams building this lovely set that's in front of you here. Well, as you can see, well, on my channel, if you go look at it, there has been no live streams since the 72 hour live stream, um, and that is because of one reason. YouTube disabled my ability to live stream, which was very odd. Um, they wouldn't tell me the reason why, which was even more odd, um, but I could find out that I would be able to stream in 90 days, so, and that was in place since the 6th of August, I think. Um, so yeah, I should be able to stream then. But that was kind of annoying. I was supposed to stream this this set. Um, would have been awesome. Would have been a series of pretty sick streams. Um, I thought, and uh, but no, YouTube <laughs> didn't want me to do that, which is kind of annoying. But it's all built and it's looking absolutely lovely. I love the set. It's so cool. Um, some of the techniques used in it are amazing. We'll take a look at that in a moment. But as I always do, let's take a look at those minifigures first off. So the first figure we're going to take a look at is just a common bystander, citizen, whatever you want to call it. Um, she's quite very simple design. Uh, the torso, just a blue jacket and a purple shirt with a star. No leg printing, but just khaki green pants. Um, the face print is very, very basic. Uh, this set, Assembly Square, celebrates 10 years of modulars. Um, and I believe in the original modulars, when they first came out in 2007, I think around that era, um, they came with these really basic face prints, I suppose it's honouring it, which is quite nice, but it would have been nice to have seen a second face print on the back of like a modern day sort of expressive face, it would have been a bit nice, um, but I'm happy, I do like them, they do look kind of cool, uh, reminiscing of old Lego figures, it's kind of nice. Um, she comes with a very simple hair piece, nothing too special with that, just a simple just ponytail. Next up we have the florist shop owner, 
So well, there's a florist in the set, and this is the owner of it. Again, simple, same as the citizen, with a very simple torso with a purple jacket and a slightly uh, lilac sort of uh, top underneath. Also a bit of a necklace detailing, which is quite nice. Again, no leg prints, just wearing a uh, tan pants. Very nice. Same a face expression, it's literally the same as all of them. And then a grey sort of hair piece like this. Nothing too special about that either. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's no exclusive pieces, so none of these figures are exclusive. But if you do know there are any exclusive pieces, please do let me know because I am really not sure. Next up we have another one of these store owners. This guy is the music shop owner. And again, he's got a nice simple print on his torso. Uh, just a checkered shirt with some grey pants on. Pretty nice. Uh, his hairpiece is... Quite a nice one, I remind the Peter Venkman hairpiece I think, which I do like, it's quite a nice hairpiece. Uh, but again, just a very simple figure, nothing too detailing special, but I do like the print of that checkered shirt, it is quite nice. We don't normally get a lot of those I don't think, so it is nice to get one. One of the more interesting figures in this set is this ballerina who dances in the dance studio, which is another one of the buildings, or floors in the set. Um, she's very nice, she's one of the more detailed, interesting. Uh, characters because of that tutu piece. It's quite a nice accessory, which is a quite a nice little inclusion. I also really like her hairpiece. The bun as well, I'm liking that, is very awesome. Um, she's got quite a nice torso print as well, sort of a tank top vest sort of thing, um, with some pink butterflies and some flowers on it. She also has some a heart necklace detailing, which is quite nice, um, but overall still simple, even being one of the most detailed characters in the set. Next up we have the Bakery Chef, quite a cool figure, still quite simple, but I do like some of the things that are included on him. I do always like the uh, hat mould that uh, chefs get, it's quite nice. And then the torso, I'm always liking that with the buttoned up shirt, and uh, not shirt, uh, what is it, apron, sort of pinny jacket sort of thing. And then he's got a red scarf, which is quite nice. Uh, he wears quite simple grey pants. Uh, quite a nice figure, um, would have been nice to have had a uh, hairpiece inclusion so you could swap it out if you wanted to. But yeah, I do like him, I do like chefs included in sets, they are quite nice, always a cool inclusion. Probably my favourite minifigure in this set is actually this barista. She is the most detailed um, figure because she's the only one that has leg printing, which is quite nice actually. Uh, I'm liking that. She's obviously got the coffee uniform on, and the torso has sort of a pinny apron on, and the um, leg printing just carries that on with the brown detailing on her sort of legs. They aren't dual molded, it is just printed on, you can see on the side there. Um, the print does look a bit off on mine, there's a bit on the um, sort of hip piece that is a bit missing, but I do like it. Uh, on the apron there's sort of a coffee with, is that a face? Yeah, it's a little face on it. Um, an orange cup with a face on it with some steam coming off. Underneath you've just got a white little jacket sort of thing or jumper just to put underneath the apron. Um, she's got quite a basic hair piece, nothing too special there. Just the sort of hair, I don't know. I don't know what kind of style that is. Um, but yeah, she's a very nice figure, but I am just appreciative of that leg printing. I just wish they would have included it a bit more on some of the other characters. It would have been nice to have some detailing as it is an £180 set. Another cool figure in my opinion is this dude. He is the photographer in the photographer studio and I really do love it. I love the moustache piece that is always one of my favourite pieces. It looks really awesome. I'm also liking the beret, so he's French. It's kind of nice, like the... It's cool how they're in a photography studio with a French man, like artistic sort of thing. Um, I'm liking that quite a lot. Uh, he wears quite a nice torso really, um, even though it does remind me of Harry Potter's quite a lot from the brand new wave of 2020 sets because he's, <coughs> pardon me, got the exact um, same sort of design with the dark red uh, top underneath and then the uh, light grey jumper or hoodie on top. I've got the borrow on my windowsill from here I'm filming and um, yeah, they do look very, very similar. But I do like him as a figure. He's nice and that torso print is cool even though it may be reminiscent of Harry Potter. But when that came out, Harry Potter wasn't even back. It was 2018 when it came out. This set came out in 2017. Another slightly interesting, sort of unusual character is this dentist. We don't get many dentists in Lego, really. Um, we've never seen a dedicated dentist building, because, I mean, not many kids want to buy a Lego dentist. Uh, I mean, I get a police station hospital or fire station, 
but not a dentist really. So I'm, I'm appreciative that they actually included a dentist. Uh, he's got a nice torso print with the tooth with the printed on the little pocket there with some tools. It's quite nice. Um, you could make a dedicated sort of dentist surgery like block sort of thing in a mock. That'd be kind of awesome. Um, but everything else about him is quite generic. Nothing special about his hair, uh, face, because it's all the same as everyone in the set, and the legs are just brown. And finally, to conclude our look at the minifigures of this set, we have the two tiniest figures in the set. We've got a little chihuahua here and a baby minifigure. Uh, looking pretty awesome. I do like the Chihuahua. I'm not sure if it was a new mould for this set. I haven't really seen it anywhere in Lego before, so it's quite nice to have it in this set. Um, I'm really liking it. A small dog, a different to the normal design we have. Uh, it's quite nice. And I always love getting the baby minifigures. They always look really cute. Because um, they're so tiny. It's just really, really awesome. <laughs> I don't know. He's got sort of a more expressive face than any of the other minifigures in the set actually because if you look at his eyes uh, there he's got white dots in them whereas all the other minifigures don't have white dots they just have black eyes so it's kind of the most detailed face if you could think about it um, but yeah I'm, I'm liking these they are really small uh, but I'm glad they've included some sort of more diversity in the age sort of thing um, and then just to mention the baby comes with a little pram as well that uh, this citizen is supposed to push, so I just wanted to mention that. But yeah, that is going to round off all our figures. We've got some quite nice ones, um, really some detailed ones with that barista, and then we've got some cool little unique figures like the dentist and these two here. So after looking at a pretty decent mini figure action, just a bit lackluster on those uh, leg printing, reminds me of Harry Potter in 2020 with hardly any leg printing, just about one or two figures a set, even in the more expensive ones. Uh, <coughs> burrow, uh, just for an example. Um, but yeah, Assembly Square is looking absolutely gorgeous right here. I mean, what you came for, the buildings itself. Um, I don't know what to say. It's just such a gorgeous set. Most of the modulars, well, actually, all the modulars always look good, but this one just takes it to the next level and just improves upon the normal modular. It's so awesome. You've got some blues and the yellow and white, uh, the green, some of the pinks and the red. Um, the nougat and the sort of dark blue and the building in all quite distinctive colours, really, not very similar. Um, and, things, and the buildings um, occupy the sort of businesses and spaces are all very distinct and very different, which is always good to see. On the bottom floor here you've got a coffee shop, a flower shop and a bakery, which is quite nice. And also evident by the logos. You've got a coffee cup with some steam, some flowers here and then a little pretzel there you can see up front. Um, but yeah, we're going to take a look at all the building's interiors in a moment, but we'll just take a look uh, at the main exterior of Assembly Square. Starting off, you've got the fountain here, uh, you've got the um, very bog standard light uh, posts, light lamps, whatever, um, well, like, which are in every single modular really, um, but in this one you get two because it is slightly bigger, um, 48 studs by 30 two, just an added 16 by 32 here, um, so it's nice to see an inclusion of two of those, but if I move the camera forward, we can take a look at some of the more details. Starting on this side of the building, um, you've got some tables and chairs outside, with a little chihuahua thing there as well, for the coffee shop, looking very nice. Also some little lights there as well, some plants at the front, um, there's also a little alleyway down there, with a door, you can see right there, it's quite difficult to see uh, and that door actually leads to some stairs which we'll take a look at in the moment you can also see some um, shrubbery up there if we move the camera away outside the flower shop there is some flowers for sale here uh, there are also some tools right there, sort of cleaning up and everything um, and then moving on to the bakery right in front and centre here very nice technique used here, they used some of the actual um, sort of corrugated window sort of pieces that normally go into those um, fire hanger door things I'm not going to try to explain it but it's a really interesting sort of technique um, and concealed behind it is a lovely big wedding cake which is really cool because we don't get very many big old wedding cakes in Lego so it's quite nice to see that um, but sorry, moving around had to move the camera. Um, you might not be able to see but on the other side of the bakery there is some sort of desserts there. On the other side um, 
just a, just a bakery, they've got to bake some stuff, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's quite a jam-packed main area. It's looking very awesome, got a lot of things going on. Um, but yeah, let's start taking a look at our first sort of main building section, by looking at the coffee shop. So after taking off the two uh, above floors of the coffee shop, we can now take a dive inside. Uh, first of all, you're greeted by a little door. Obviously, it's got to have a door. Um, but as you go inside, you've got some tables and chairs, some khaki green tables. Uh, you've got some food on the tables here. Uh, looks like a little pie sort of thing. Um, some flowers on that table there. And you've got the main cash register and sort of where the barista minifigure makes the coffee. Um, sort of some more plates on there, some coffee mugs, the coffee machine, and also a back way out there. There's a door you can open to the back of Assembly Square. And then also the door I mentioned just now is right there, and it leads to these stairs. And these stairs obviously will lead to the floor above it, which we'll take a look at um, later. But it's quite a detailed little uh, building. You've got some nice floor pans on there. Um, quite awesome, I am liking it. If you want to look at the side, nothing too special there. It's got the pin connector holes uh, if you want to connect it to any modular. But I really like the coffee shop. It's quite a distinctive Lego thing. We don't get many coffee shops in Lego often, so it is quite nice to see it. And it's quite a detailed little coffee shop. I am really liking it. It's got some nice details in it. Um, but yeah, pretty solid. And also the exterior looks pretty pretty awesome as well. So again, after taking off the two above floors of the florist shop, we can take a look at it. Uh, we took a look at the outside, so let's jump straight in to the inside. Uh, you've got the little some flowers here, some bunches in there, looking quite nice. Opposite to a very snazzy parrot, one of the dual moulded ones. Uh, mine looks a bit odd, you can see some of the green where the two plastics have mixed together, looking quite awesome. Um, you've got the main cash register here with some money, the till, and uh, a little flower there. There's also a feature, sorry my hand, that you can just open that up and then you put it back. Also some flowers on display here and they're actually not connected, they're just rested in there and they're quite fiddly to actually get back in together. Um, but yeah, you just push them like that. There's also some opening windows, so that window opens and you can close that from the outside. And then also this window opens there as well. Some nice little things. Also another door. The doorway that opens out to the back of Assembly Square here with the uh, four or five studs that are just exposed there with nothing on them. It's quite nice. Uh, another little exit doorway or back way into it. Um, there's also a little uh, passageway. So these two, the bakery and the flower shop are actually linked together, which is quite nice, kind of awesome. Um, so obviously, I'm going to take a look at the bakery now, because since they're linked by the little doorway, you can see it better there. Um, the bakery is by far my favourite building on the bottom. It was the most fun to build. I uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, you've got the main, like, sort of tail here. We already took a look at the flowers. Not flowers. <laughs> I'm too busy to talk about the flower shop, when those are definitely not flowers. Those are, like, pastries and cakes. And then also, if I just turn it around quickly, um, you can see that lovely wedding cake there. Pretty awesome. Quite a nice, interesting build for that, actually. Um, but yeah, the cash register there. You can also see some more, some donuts and some pastries there. And there's even more pastries, and there's even a white croissant on the shelf there, which is quite awesome. You've also got an ore, ore piece there, which you may think is quite odd. But if you look right here and something is going to happen if it opens there you go and there we go look i just pushed that out um so it's a little if i just get my fingers in there um a platter of these sort of meringue custard sort of things you just slot it in the little thing um there and there is a push thing right there, a little Technic pin, where you just knock it in and it just opens the door, which is quite awesome. And then you just close the little door here and it opens quite a nice little function, I really do appreciate that. You've also got a clock on the wall above some little stairs that lead to the back exit door, which only half opens because it hits the railing. And then you're greeted by some nice little stairs there that lead up to the next door. You've also got one more door out there 
which leads to the excess base out there with um, a little crate there, nothing special. Um, but yeah, it's really awesome. I really do like this bottom floor. There's some interesting techniques used, uh, especially here. Um, with these just all clipped on something, it's quite awesome. Uh, then I really like the way this is used. See, so maybe like, how is that inverted? Because it's the bottom of a plate. Well, they use these. These stick on, as you can see by that one, they didn't come off, stick onto these exposed sort of above studs. And it's a really uh, interesting technique. Really do like it. It adds some really nice uh, detailing. It just looks absolutely awesome, really. Um, I really do love it. It's one of my favourite techniques used in this set. And it makes this bottom layer a really interesting layer with some cool, um, interesting, very distinct buildings. Uh, not uh, buildings or businesses and everything. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at the next layer or these next three buildings, which is very awesome. So again, after taking off the two above layers, we can now take a look at the florist. We've already taken a look at the front, so let's dive straight into the interior. It's quite a little compact little flower shop. Um, you've got some flowers for sale here, some bunches of red roses and stuff. You've also got a little parrot there, one of the jewel moldy ones. And if it focuses, um, that. You may see that there's a bit of green or nine because the two moulds um, have mixed together the yellow and the blue, and they've made green, which is quite interesting. Um, that's the thing with those parrots, they sometimes actually do that. Um, so it's kind of unique, each one is unique, one out of one. Um, but yeah, they've got a nice little cash register here, you've got some flowers there, a money, a till, and then there's also a blue, um, sort of lilac y uh, coloured flower on the um, front there, with some um, invert, not inverted. Uh, little modified tiles. Uh, you've also got a little gate there so the employee can just slot in so no one else can. And there's also some, some balanced flowers here and they're not connected to anything, they're just there. Three pieces. Um, they're actually just resting on a sort of gate sort of piece, um, which is kind of nice. Sometimes it is annoying with loose Lego because sometimes it can like fly out and if you knock those over, they are very fiddly. Even with my smallish hands, they are quite fiddly, so imagine with an adult's hand trying to put those in if they ever knock it. Awesome opening windows in here. So you've got one there, which opens, and then also uh, one here as well. And I just knocked one of those flowers off. <sighs> I'll leave that for the moment, but it's going to be annoying and very tedious to actually fix. Also there's one final door here that just leads to the excess space uh, at the back with the little light there and the sort of alleyway sort of here. Um, and there's also a little mini alleyway, sort of just a little corridor um, leading to the bakery which we're going to oh, take a look at next. Quite a solid um, sort of establishment. Um, you've got the pastries and cakes we looked at uh, earlier and then if we turn it round we can take a look at that very nice wedding cake that I showed. Um, when I showed it earlier, you could only see the like, bottom of it. I just thought we'd uh, look at the whole thing of it. Because it's quite interesting, it's quite a nice build. It even uses some Technic in it, which was quite surprising. Um, the baker is quite a nice build. You've got a cashier here with some more uh, desserts. You've got some donuts and everything. You've got the till and cash register and everything. And then you've got some nice pasties and all desserts and all nice stuff. Even a white croissant on the wall there, looking quite snazzy. Um, also, there's a very nice play feature, um, a very awesome play feature that I really do love about this um, bakery. There you go, that's it. Um, so you just push a Technic, uh, there, it is, there it is, a Technic thing at the back, and it pushes out some of the little meringue pasty sort of things, um, which is quite nice, quite a little nice fun function, you know. Um, I do like that. It's nice. It's nice they've actually put some functions into a modular building. I do like that. Um, but it is, again, very, very fiddly to get back in if you um, fully push it out, even with my small hands. Uh, but there's also a clock above some stairs, um, which leads to the door, which only half opens. And that leads to just some stairs at the back here to lead to the next floor. And you've also got another door. Which leads to the excess, which is uh, below the stairs. So you've got some nice, more exit ways to get out of the bakery. Uh, quite a lot of doors on this bottom level. 
Um, and it rounds off as quite an interesting level. There are some very nice techniques used, as I'll highlight right here. As you can see, it's sort of the bottom of the plate and not the smoothness. Well, that is because they use these. These things just clip onto the studs and then they stick into these. And it looks very nice, very effective. It's a really awesome technique and I really do love it. It looks amazing. This floor, the bottom floor, it's quite diverse. Coffee shop, flower shop and bakery. The bakery and coffee shop may be quite similar, but still it's nice. We don't normally get a lot of these buildings um, and I really like it. It is um, really honestly my favourite floor of the Assembly Square. It, I mean, I love it because it's got the ground floor and everything. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really solid floor. Um, I really enjoyed building it. It's always fun. But yeah, let's take a look at the next floor with some very more interesting and even more unique things than this floor. So taking away the main base of Assembly Square, here is the second floor. Uh, you've got the one blue building here, you've got the green one here, and then you've got the nougat one here. Let's start with this one here, which is actually a music studio. But it's got quite a nice exterior, actually, uh, before we take a look at the inside. You've got some nice arched windows here. And it's really, really strange. This one has one of those window pane pieces put in it, but this one doesn't. You can just stick your finger in it, which I think is really weird. Um, so this floor and the one above it can easily get broken into, because a minifig can just stick their hand in and just... Yeah, I don't see that, uh, why Lego didn't put the pain piece in, because there is the holes that you can actually use to put the pain, and they have made them before. It didn't really make much sense to me, but, heh, the Lego and they did it. And there's also some flowers here, and there's just a continu continuation of the design there. The interior is quite bland, really, there's not much going on. There's some guitars on um, the wall there, there's a cast register where the minifigure stands, there's a nice drum kit, which I'd love, I'd love to play the drum kit, I do, uh, I just don't have one in my house, which is kind of annoying, and also a saxophone, which is a very nice mould, in pearl gold I think, um, so yeah, there's not much space used, there's a lot, well, a lot of space used here, um, and stuff, but I wish they added a little more instruments into it maybe, or something, um, you know, it's cool, we don't get many instrument stores. I always find in these modulars, we get some more unique things and everything. You can also see where the gap in the floor there, where the stairs from the cafe, um, cafe whatever, uh, coffee shop, lead to. Um, but yeah, I do like this floor. It is a nice, you get some nice pieces in it, um, but it is a bit bland and just not full as some of the other floors. Um, moving on to more interesting floors, we're going to take a look at these two, um, but the exterior is quite nice actually, you've got some sort of sand green with the grey, some flowers up top here, you've got some of the white panes as well, as well as uh, the clear ones, also on the other side there, and this one, it's awesome, you've got some of the nice cheese slopes used here, in the nougat colour, and they use one of my favourite techniques, where you use the uh, modified bricks there and you can always see the little gap there so it looks very awesome and um, we've also got some dark red hinges not hinges um, sort of half slope pieces there that can do you also got a very nice printed window piece uh, prevents yellowing dentist so it's sort of a pun preventing yellowing the white bricks um, get yellowed and stuff which is a nice little pun there included by Lego uh, but let's take a look at the interior so this one, you may be surprised at what it is, um, it's quite an interesting one, it's actually a photo studio, so as you can see here, there's sort of a white board here, there's nothing on, the sub there's no subject there, that would have been nice if they had a sort of stand with an apple on it maybe, or something, or a pear, or maybe a woman or something, or I don't know, <laughs> something to represent the camera, but then there's a really old fashioned camera from like the 1800s something, like the original cameras with the flash, um, I mean, really there should be sort of some little tape here where you have to put it over because that's how they did it back in those days. Um, but it's also used a really interesting interesting technique that's used in the Batmobile. Those are some of the hinge bricks and that's one of the ball joints. You put them in the middle and they just, they connect and it's really, really awesome. Um, you've also got some print on the wall here. Uh, looks to be his father possibly or something, but it's the dude there. You've also got a drink there on a little drinks cabinet. Uh, nothing too special there. There's a little door leading to the next one, which is actually a dentist. Um, as I pointed out in the minifigures, there's a dentist minifigure in the set. 
Um, and also it's got two doors, which looks interesting. You've got the door here, which leads to the stairs below that are on the previous floor of the bakery. And then you've got the door that leads from this stairs, which will go up to the next floor. There's a clock in between them with a dark blue sort of chair there. You've got a little waiting room with some magazines there. A uh, little thing, ca not cash registers, probably just a check in. There's a little flower on the floor there. Um, you've got the door there, you've got the pane. And then you've got the main dentist chair, which looks very detailed, it's a very awesome little build. Uh, you've got some poseable elements as well. You can move a lot of this, you can move it up and down, side to side. So let's move the table uh, how much you want, looking very awesome. Uh, you've also got some cabinet up there, holding some sort of medicine and drinks. Um, you've got a little tap here with some sink and stuff, some more cabinets. And then you've got a little picture of a boat on the sunset. Um, overall, this floor is quite nice. Obviously not as jam-packed as the previous floor because, I mean, that doesn't, you don't have any of the groundness or base plate on the bottom of this. But I do like it. It has more unique stuff. The photography studio is quite a nice highlight. Um, the dentist is quite nice as well. But the music studio does kind of let it down really with a not enough space used, in my opinion. Um, but I am liking the exterior really. I prefer the exterior on this level um, than the previous one. Uh, but overall, a pretty decent level. I really enjoyed building it. Um, it's always fun doing some cool techniques. But this was very tedious to do. You had to build three of these, and it was very, very tedious to do. Um, anyways, on to the next floor with, yet again, some even more interesting and unique uh, building inhabitants. So the final floor of Assembly Square looks very similar to the previous floor. Um, you've got the uh, sort of sand blue building there, you've got the nougat coloured there, and then this one actually sort of stops. You use some Thor's hammers and some big black pieces here. And that ends the sort of sand green sort of flower shop um, building. Also, I included the roof pieces as well, just so I can review them sort of all in one. Uh, they're quite interesting, but kind of a bit boring. Uh, let's start with this one, as we did before. You've got some sort of uh, archway pieces here, and then you've got some the tiles there to mark it out. You've also got a little skylight there, which looks quite nice. And um, then you've got a little trap door, which opens to the actual stairs. Which is very nice as well, if we just take it off. We can have a look at the dance studio below, which I mentioned as well in the minifigures. We have the ballerina and we have the dance studio. It's very interesting, you've got a mirror piece, a clear mirror piece, which is very interesting to see in Lego set. Um, I do like that, you've also got a bar for her to hang on if she wants to. Also a grand piano here, and there's just a lacklustre space of dance studio. But you can't really have anything else in the dance studio. Um, you need really a mirror, piano, and that's about it, really. Um, you can put the ballerina figure anywhere you want, just dancing, prancing around, or whatever. Uh, but also, you can have her open the door in the corner here to lead out to the balcony. It's very tiny, but it's still a little balcony there. Also, some opening windows. There's two. This one more hard to get to than that one. Um, but yeah, quite a nice little thing. I do like the piano build. Um, it doesn't use a actual printed piece, they are those are grill pieces to actually represent the keys, which is very cool, a nice technique instead of using uh, the 1x4 print as introduced. Um, very cool like that. Uh, moving over to the final floor of the next one. Um, you've got sort of a blue, dark blue spire with a white point, uh, a chicken piece here, which is quite interesting, used in sort of a, the gate thing here, which is used there. Um, quite simple, no skylight like the other one, um, so let's just take that off and have a look at what's below. Um, this is one of my favourite buildings of the set, it's actually an apartment building, um, which is very, very nice. You've got a Lego City there, which I'm very pleased about, it's very awesome. Looks to be a little train layout, you've got a train there I think, um, some mountains with a little tunnel, looking nice. You've got some trains there, you've also got another one of the modular buildings, I think that's the Grand Emporium, I think, to build there, which I do like, that's a very nice little detail thrown in. Um, is that the first modular? I'm not sure. If you know anything about modulars, please do let me know, because um, that might be an homage, because this is the 10th anniversary, they might be paying homage to the first one, whatever, I'm not really sure. Uh, I suppose this is the kitchen area. Now you've got the hob, 
uh, stove, the um, sink, and some cupboards up top. Uh, you've got a little print of a little bridge, looks like the Golden Gate Bridge to me in San Francisco. You've also got some little random things on a shelf here, which don't really make much sense. Um, it's blocky. You've got a nice sofa build actually, which is really nice in my opinion. Um, there is a little play feature you can do with that as well. So if you just do it like this, you can sorry, sorry about my hands. Uh, you can pull it out, and it becomes the sofa bed, which is very nice. And you just fold it back in like that, and then you have a normal sofa, which is very cool. I do like that because there's no bed in this apartment, so I suppose you can have a sofa bed. Also, a little Eiffel Tower in there of the Lego set, which is very nice as well. There's also a little bathroom in here, which is very, very cramped. Um, you've also got some opening windows. There are some of the sort of more simpler ones, which I suppose you've got to have. You've also got the opening door, which opens that way, which is kind of odd. It opens onto the box of the Grand Emporium, um, or whatever that is, I'm not really sure. And that obviously leads to the stairs, which came down from below. And then the final section of Assembly Square is this. Uh, just a little barbecue area. You've got a nice barbecue here with some pan pots and pans, a coffee mug, a little shrubbery plant, uh, some chairs, and then you've got some little ladders up here to the roof you can overlook the rest of assembly square um so yeah that's gonna do it really i'm just gonna cut back to you guys when we've got the full assembly square and head out on into the outro so after looking at everything that's included in the set and my was that quite a lot um this video is probably gonna be really long after i've edited it um but yeah assembly square is an amazing set uh, i really love it so many little details such an awesome modular, I cannot wait to put it in my LEGO City. Yes, my LEGO City, just to tease you guys. There will be uh, <clears throat> possibly something coming in the future of a LEGO City for Brixo Studios. Um, but yeah, it looks gorgeous, it was an amazing build. Um, I'm sorry about the live streams, that is kind of annoying. Um, YouTube clearly hate my channel, but they don't keep turning on my comments anymore, so that's a good thing. Um, so that's kind of a good thing, but the live streaming is a bit of a downer. But I'll probably have it by Christmas, um, maybe November, I think. Around November, so before my birthday and Christmas, I'll be able to do some awesome live streams of the sets I get for my birthday and Christmas. Because, I mean, I love doing live streams. They got really fun. And then you should turn it off. I would love, love to have live streamed this set. It would have been awesome to have some cool guests on and everything. Um, but, uh, yeah. Oh, this set is amazing. There's so many good things I could say about it. It's worth every penny of the £180. Um, I mean, 4,002 pieces is is ridiculous for £180. Um, 4,000 piece set should normally be like 200 and... Well, probably three, 300. Um, 300 maybe or something. Maybe 250 or something around there. But 180 is just mad. Um... It's such a gorgeous set. If you want a modular building and you want to start out collecting modulars, I would honestly recommend this is your first one. Um, it may be the most expensive, and honestly it may not be around for much longer. But, I mean, it is the best, and it shows you what modulars are at its best. I already have the Diner, you know, the downtown Diner from 2018. Um, and that's an amazing one. That was my first modular. But I'm so glad I got this, because it is just amazing. Uh, it's, it looks amazing. It would even look amazing on a shelf as well, and it's got some great parts in it as well, so you can make some pretty um, sick mocks out of it. Um, and I'd love to see someone take uh, part of this beautiful set and make something cooler out of it. It'd be interesting to see what they could make. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Enjoyed, <laughs> enjoyed the video. It was a really, really long one, uh, but to review this beauty is just amazing. Um, as I said, teasing the Lego City. Mm -hmm in the future, future coming, stay tuned for that. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.